Hey everyone, hope you're doing good and welcome to another episode of GA Snooker Weekly League Vlog. I know I need a better name than that. Please comment below with your suggestions because I'm out of ideas. In case you missed last week's opening episode, and feel free to go back and watch it now if you did, I talk you through the ups and downs, the flukes and frustrations of playing in a social inter-club, or not inter-club, internal club, snooker league. Coming up in this episode, I play two further games, one against a player I've not played before and one against my friend Isaac, who you've probably seen on the channel already. My name's Ad and I'm a snooker YouTube content creator known as Rope for Q. And I've recently been invited to join a club within my snooker club known as Good Afternoon Snooker. And we are mainly a bunch of social snooker players who occasionally get leagues going and cup competitions going and this is a vlog about our winter league we play with a handicap system which works the opposite of golf i don't know either and uh, yeah it means that the higher the handicap you have in theory the better player you are or at least the more experienced player you are and the lower the handicap the newer to the game you are but before we do if you're not already please consider subscribing to the channel because it really does help keep me motivated getting these videos out for you to enjoy uh, I'm trying to do three videos a week during the sort of main snooker season, which is on at the moment. But it can be challenging. Work sometimes gets in the way and life sometimes gets in the way. So it really does help to know that there's people out there interested in what I'm putting out. And if you do like what you see, please consider liking the videos, uh, not just this one, but any others that you watch as well. And that just helps YouTube get them out to uh, other like-minded snooker people like yourselves. I should also say I've got my notes on my screen just on my right. So if you see me glancing to my screen on the right, it's not because I'm not concentrating. It's because I'm reading my notes and I want to get things right. So I played my first match on Sunday, the 22nd of January of this week. And just for the purposes of the vlog, the weeks are going to go from Sunday to Saturday. This match was against a player called Rich. Uh, now, Rich is the player I have not played before. Nor have I really seen him play because I guess our practice or match schedules are on a different uh, time because uh, I don't think I've seen him at the club. If I have, it was before I knew who he was. So uh, I didn't really pay much attention to how he was playing. But what I can tell you is he has a 14 handicap just like me, which means in theory he should be about my level. Frame 1 started out with a bit of a safety exchange following a good break off from Rich. But the first clear cut potting chance fell to me with this red. I had a chance of a pink to the right middle, but I couldn't net it. Rich was then able to cut in this red to the top right corner using the rest almost Luca Purcell style, but didn't manage to get on a colour, but played a good roll up, up to leave me in uh, a bit of a pickle. I could get through to the red, but I didn't get, get it quite right, but I still didn't expect this to happen. <laughs> the next chance of red came my way, but I couldn't get the cue ball out for the black. I played this as a shot to nothing, but I hit it too hard, so the cue ball came further down than I would have liked. So it's a good job the red dropped, but I missed a shot on the colour, but a fortunate kiss on the green left it safe. Rich got the next chance with this red along the cushion, but it was pretty straight and he hit it pretty hard to move the cue ball out, but it stayed on the cushion. So he took it behind the brown. A plant was next for Rich, but he wasn't able to put the green past the brown to get a break going. Another fine pot for Rich, but, but in moving a red into a pot position, he didn't manage position on a colour, and rather than getting the long gear out, he played for the black off the cushion. I was very happy to see this red disappear after this long pot. The brown was then waiting near the top corner pocket, another than the red in the middle to keep the break going, but I hit it too hard and it flew past the brown. So just a containing safety brings this mid mini break to a bit of a premature close. Six. 
Another red for me, but I really need to dial back the power on these, as again, I sail past all those colours waiting near the bulk area. I had to get the fishing tackle out for this red over the corner, but I couldn't get to the black. This one was a little tricky, more angle than it looked, but thankfully the black I had left over the pocket early was still waiting, but I wasn't able to land on a red. But another red from me that nearly changed its mind about going in the middle pocket. It wasn't far off the black, but I had a good lead, so I was just happy to see the reds go down at this point. Rich was unlucky here. The cue ball wiggled into the middle, even at this pace. But then it was my turn for a mistake. I need to cut these out of my game. It's usually at least one per match. The result was a snooker, but Rich decided to ask me to play again rather than taking the free ball, resulting in another four points away, keeping Rich interested in this frame. Sometime later, and Rich puts me in another snooker, more points away from me, and I'm beginning to fear that Rich could get back into this. He already doesn't need snoopers, but the scores are not far apart as the potting has suggested. But eventually I get a shot to nothing chance on the yellow. The yellow goes in, but the safety is too good. Rich gets the green down, but he needs a clearance from here. Don't do it. Yeah. I did fluke a snooker on the brown, which Rich missed and gave away five. And one of the best ways to get avoid being in the snooker is to lay one yourself. Closely followed by another. Eventually, I had a chance to pot the brown, which should have ended the match. But Rich did lay a good snooker, and whilst I hit the brown with the swerve, I couldn't stop the white from going in. This left Rich with the brown, and he played a good positional shot on the blue. Uh, but it was a valiant attempt to get position on the pink that caused him to miss the blue, sticking it up for me, which I was able to get in, and this nice pot on the pink made du doubly sure of the frame.
On to frame two now, and it's Rich that gets the first chance, then isn't far off the black. Go Get the next chance though with this red to the middle, but yet again I overhit it and failed to land on the waiting ball colours, and hence get nowhere near this black. <laughs> Another chance to Rich and a nice cannon on the blue sets him up nicely for blue or possibly the black but it's close as to whether he can get onto the point angle. He can and takes the 8 points following a rest miss on a red. But he makes up for that rest miss with a successful pot and follows it up with the brown. But the red into the middle refuses the pocket and it's end of break. Still he gets the next chance, another rest shot, but I think he would have liked that pink back. And again, it's Rich who gets the next red. With no colour on, he plays the snooker, which is only the sensible thing to do, really. You guessed it, another red pot with the rest for Rich. That's too many hours in that sentence. You should use the rest more often, I think. A red over the pocket for Rich, followed by the black with, absolutely right, yes, the rest. But misses the next red, unfortunately. Finally, a pot sinks for me, and nicely on the pink, but the next red doesn't go in. My turn for a red over the pocket. A nice brown, but a bump off the middle pocket knuckle puts pair to position on the next red. A tricky cut into the middle for me, but don't manage to hold for the black, unfortunately. Yeah, another red, but with no colour is no good for me. Uh, so I'm going to struggle to catch Rich's lead at this, at this rate. Uh, at this point, I don't need snookers, but I decided to give one a go. Rich tries to swerve, but it doesn't quite go right. Rich does eventually get the yellow, but he's very unlucky to snook himself in green, but he escapes nicely. Green for me, but I really should have got this brown, and with the blue and the pink close to the pocket, this was a chance.
But a safety mistake from me leaves Rich a chance on the brown, followed by the blue over the pocket. I need one snooker on the pink, but going in off ends the frame. So a draw for this one, but honestly I'm disappointed. Rich didn't play well by his own admission, and whilst I was struggling with my position, I felt my potting in general was better than my opponent. But after winning the first frame, I maybe relaxed too much and started giving away too many chances. Uh, the frame I got, they got away basically. Match two then, and this was almost a week later on the following Saturday, and was against Isaac, who if you've been following the channel for a while now, was a seen pretty close match between us in the GA Snooker Christmas Cup. Isaac was ultimately victorious in that competition, but as a result, his handicap got raised to 21. Uh, so for this reason, I fancied this match. The first chance fell to me, but as it's becoming a bit of a theme this week, I overhit this corner pocket pot and could have had an easier bought colour. A rest pot was next for me, but the stun up for the blue didn't quite work as intended. But as if to prove how rusty he was after a week's holiday, Isaac went and misjudged a thin one and handed me five points. It's normally me that does this. A slow roll into the middle gave me my first good chance of a colour. The brown goes in, but not enough action on the cue ball. But I spot, I spot a plant in the pack, but it takes some good fortune for it to go down, even though I did call it first. This was followed up by a tricky green, but only a safety shot was on after that. A nice log red here for me, but a kiss on the red prevented a nice position on a bought colour, so just a safety, which I ended up miscuing. Sorry about the camera angle, you didn't really get to see that. But this leaves a chance of a cut in the middle for Isaac. The cannon gives him a nice position on the blue to the middle, but then he misses the straight red to the corner. Then Isaac was very unlucky, he played an otherwise perfectly weighted safety, but the cue ball found its way into the uh, left top on the pocket. He did get the next chance, but he was disappointed with this attempt on the black. The next chance was mine, but I can't explain why I played the red like this, only to cut off the potting angle for the easy black. But the next red was mine, and this time I did manage to get on that black that was still close to the pocket, even though I had to get the long stuff out for both shots. Isaac plays this nice cross table red and got a nice cannon on another red, leaving him with a choice of blue or black. He takes the blue and does manage to get down. Another chance for Isaac, including this nice tricky pot on the black. My turn now, but I wasn't able to build on this red with the pink. Really should have got that pink in, really. Uh, 
A nice little three ball mini break for me next. With this red, blue, red, but I have no idea why I chose to take on the brown rather than the black with the red on the cushion. I mean, I was unlikely to leave anything on if I missed it. An exchange of snookers here. First me putting Isaac in one after a safety, and then his successful escape, he put me in an even nastier one, which I was unable to escape from. Which then left an easy start for Isaac, which he got him folded up with a nice black. But then the next points came my way after a misjudgment meant Isaac caught the pink and went in off trying to get to the green. I managed to sink the green and did an okay job of getting on the brown but I needed the long stuff so I ended up missing it and sticking it up for Isaac. who gladly took it but was unable to follow it up for the blue. At this point he needs a clearance to win and the balls were not bad so I was actually fearing the worst here. But having missed the blue he left a chance for me which I took but the pink was too difficult so I played a containing two. Isaac does now need a sneaker. But after a few attempts to try and get me in trouble, I did get a chance on the pink and fold it up with the black, even though I didn't really need to play it. So frame one goes my way, and on we go into frame two. Chance one on the frame came to me, I was very happy with this pot on the green and the confidence of winning the previous frame made me try to play for position on the red above the black. But perhaps that was misplaced as I then tried to split them and get on the black and I missed the red. Another chance for me but I couldn't afford canning in the pack which meant I was, wasn't ideal on the colour. Hence missing the pink. Isaac then plays this nice cross table red and lands nicely on the black. But he's unable to convert. A fortunate quadruple for me, but next, but the snooker gods took his vengeance as I have snookered on all colours apart from a thin edge of the green which I did manage to find, but I invited Isaac to watch closely in case I clipped the red. I was pretty happy with these few shots, and I stunned to hold for the black, followed by a cannon to stay on the reds, but then... The next red, whilst I potted it, black didn't go to the corner, so it's just a safety left for then. Isaac gets a chance here, but a cannon means he's not ideal on the pink or black, so I tried the brown, but doesn't manage to get it. A missed pot, and not by much from me, gives Isaac a really nice chance, but take nothing away from him, he makes a really nice 16 break here, regardless of uh, how badly I played to give him the chance.
Another nice break here from Isaac, started off with this confident long pot. I do think he would be disappointed with his last shot on the red though. I'm showing this miss from me as it was a chance to make at least a comfortable eight break having landed perfectly on the black, which would have kept me close to Isaac on points. A lovely long pot from Isaac here, followed up by the yellow, but then the in off on the red cancelled all that hard work out. But then an in-off from me. Frustrating thing was I identified the risk of the in-off and tried to avoid it with screw, but it just didn't work. I should have just played it playing ball. <laughs> this was closely followed by a careless and costly in-off, which really shouldn't be happening, and the frustration was building in me. It was costly because gifted Isaac an easy start for this really nice break. He took these well, but I should never have given him the ball in the D to make the opening pot as comfortable as it was. So by the time we got to the last red, I didn't need snookers, but it was close, so I decided to try and play for one while the free ball chance was most favourable. And I did manage to land one, not the most challenging escape, but I couldn't have predicted this. Nice apology from Isaac though. And that's when the camera battery runs out, unfortunately, which I didn't notice until the end of the frame. But with that red and pink, I did need snookers, and I wasn't able to get one, so I basically conceded on the brown, I think. So another draw, and at the time I thought I was lucky to get that, as I didn't play well, especially in the second frame. Isaac got his potting going in the second and pretty punished my silly mistakes. So the positive I can take away from this is if, if I can maintain my concentration and keep back the frustration, I think I wouldn't be far off taking a victory in a frame like this. Anyway, these results leave me currently fourth in the league. There are still a few people who have yet to play at all or have only played one or two matches. I also have some of the higher handicap players such as Kelvin and Rob still to play, whereas others behind me have already got these matches out of the way. Anyway, that's all for this week. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time for more GA Snooker League action.